Ah, uh, hi folks. Durick TV for the most north easterly nook in Britain, in a small wee village of Cruden Bay that most folk have not even heard of. Well, we're connecting today with a lovely lass for Glasgow University and a handsome young chill for the capital city of Edinburgh. Now, how are these connections coming about? Well, our love and enthusiasm for the language and the dialects and culture of Scotland. That's what it's about. So I'm going to pass you over to Joanna. Uh, Joanna, if you could introduce yourself, please. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Joanna Kopatrick and I'm senior lecturer in Scots and English at the University of Glasgow. So my thing is really um, researching and teaching the history of Scots. And it's a real privilege to be able to do that in Scotland, you know, talking to Scottish and uh, English and international students about the history of this wonderful language, um, about its sounds and spellings and um, other things, you know, um, through the whole broad spectrum. So that's what I do. Oh, brilliant. That's like jo Joanna. Now we're going to go over to Jack. Jack Fay, the, for Al Ricky, the capital city. Jack. Al Ricky, it's a lie. Hello, um, I am Jack Kaepner. I am the political officer of Urvice. And for them that didn't ken, Urvice is a campaign group made up of uh, all sorts of folk. We've got artists, singers, academics like Joanna, political activists like myself. And uh, we are a campaign group calling for a Scots Language Act. We're wanting mayor recognition, mayor promotion and mayor protection for the Scots language through an act of parliament in the Scottish Parliament. Absolutely brilliant. Joanna, back to you, Joanna. Tell us a bit more about the project. Yes, so uh, we are really excited about this project. This is the first um, large scale public consultation about the future of Scots. And as Jack was saying, uh, I'm also involved in the uh, Urvice as the academic officer. So we uh, thought that uh, the kind of a change that we, we would like to see in legislation won't happen without research, without uh, data, without something to uh, present to the politicians and policymakers uh, to inform their decision making. So, uh, you know, no change in legislation will happen without that kind of background work. So that's exactly what we are doing with the project. And we are starting uh, by asking people in the survey to uh, share their opinions, to share their attitudes and their, their reflections on the future of Scots, on the provision for Scots in four main areas. So um, these are education, uh, media, uh, creative arts and policymaking itself. Uh, so we have um, identified these, these areas as um, something that is really important to engage uh, uh, our community uh, as well, um, uh, because uh, this is where the change can happen. This is where we can see um, you know, more um, work being done uh, in Scots nowadays. And we were just curious you know, about what, what folk uh, think about it. So we will take the results of this survey and present them and analyze them uh, at stakeholder workshops with representatives from these, these four uh, main areas. And hopefully at the end of the whole process, we'll have something more substantial to present to policymakers and hopefully influence legislation and, and change in, in that area. So we're really excited about that uh, and um, I think the survey is, is, is doing great uh, and it would be wonderful if more people took part and just uh, you know informed this, this whole process um, and um, we will we'll keep everybody informed about its results. Yeah and I think uh, Joanna and Jack that you know the Scots language and the dialects, the different dialects, the host of many different dialects in within Scotland is a very important, it's very important because it's not just how we speak, it's who we are, you know, who we are culturally, who we are from centuries gone back, who we are today and who will be, who, who will we be in the future, you know, and, and I think it's all about our, our identity and it's great that there is an organisation like Our Vice, which are, you know, forging ahead and trying to promote our Scots language and trying to get it, you know, you know for people to recognise it, that it's, it's you know, we have to engage in it because it's going to get, it will get lost if we don't do anything about it. Jack, over to you on these words. I, I, I basically, I, I would echo what you're saying yourself there that, you know, it's, it's about who we are. Um, and if it's not us that's helping promote Scots and campaigning on its behalf, then who will? Because there isn't any other part of the world that, that speaks it. It's your own responsibility. And uh, just kind of echoing what Joanna, Joanna's saying, 
um, the, you know, getting the community together. And it's important to us that we engage all different dialects of Scots, all different parts of the country, for the northeast to Shetland to the borders to Glasgow, that we're engaging all the speakers to create a language policy and a language act that works for us. That it isn't just a bunch of high hegians dictating to the aim below. That it's us making our own path, forging ahead ourselves, and that's what this project's all about. Is but getting getting folks' own thoughts, canvassing what folk want in education, in culture, in policy making, seeing what we think, and then taking that to the politicians and expressing our advice because that's what it's all about: making our advice and our thoughts heard. And uh, I think it's really important that we're engaging with, your, with yourself today because obviously the northeast of Scotland um, and Doric speakers is where the language is, you know, strongest in the country. It's really, really the heartlands of the Scots language nowadays. And, uh, you know, engaging with yourself and engaging with your viewers, it's really important to hear what they have to think about the future of Scots. Because obviously the way I speak is Edinburgh Scots and I'm the representative of the Hale country and I'm certainly no representative of Doric speakers so it's important Doric speakers are engaging as well and and feeding into this process because what I maybe want for the language is not doesn't really chime with maybe Doric speaking communities and what a, a Doric Thurman community thinks of the language doesn't chime with a Doric fishing community so getting everybody's voices in is really important because it's such a diverse wee country and a diverse language and we want to hear all him that folk have got to say. That's, uh, that's lovely, uh, uh, Jack. Now, I was just going to ask, Joanna, Joanna, your role at Glasgow University, could you just tell us briefly, what is your role at uh, Glasgow, as we would say up here, uh, what is your role in Glasgow University and why? Why are you <laughs> um, so excited about the Scots culture? Well, maybe I'll start with the second part of your question. So, uh, as you can hear, I'm not a Scot speaker. Um, I'm I'm Polish. So, um, I first came to Scotland at the start of the 90s at a very impressionable teenage uh, p moment in my life, and uh, I just completely fell in love with with this country. You know, I think I was destined for Scotland since then uh, because the the history, the culture, the landscape just fascinated me, and I wanted to know more and more about it. So when I w went to study English at the university in Poland, I wanted to specialize in something that would bring me closer to to Scotland and Scottish topics, and I discovered Scots, and this was something that completely blew my mind because I didn't realize that you know the British Isles actually had so much linguistic diversity and the history of the relationships between Scots and English and between different dialects and how these things developed in, in historical uh, times and how they link to you know, the developments in, in culture, in, in society, in various historical um, political developments. It's just fascinating. And, and then when I started coming to Scotland to do a bit of my research, I realized that in your country, you don't really necessarily know that much about the history of your own language and that really bothered me you know it was something that I, I wanted to change or I wanted to engage a little bit more with and of course I'm not the first person to have done this. Obviously, there's been a lot of research and important work done by, you know, people like Jack Aitken, Derek McClure, uh, Robert McCall Miller, to just name a few people, a few giants on whose shoulders I, I am proud to stand today, you know, just to do the kind of work that they have been doing um, for a long time now, educating new generations of Scots speakers uh, about their culture, about their language, about the, the rich history and tradition and, uh, you know, just to be proud of, of who you are and where you came from. I think this realization is really so important. So I'm just, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm just really privileged to be able to do it right now at the University of Glasgow. And um, I think the feedback we're getting from students is that they really want to know more because that's not part of your regular curriculum. This is not something that you're learning, you know, as a run of the mill thing in your in your school. And I think we should be changing this because it's such mm -hmm. a big an important part yes. of, of who you are. Yeah, and who definitely. We are. <laughs> yeah, and just just see the enthusiasm in your two in your two faces, Joanna and, and Jack. And 
you know, we need to pass on this enthusiasm, you know, in the mediums that we can, because we know we live in a fast world today. And a lot of youngsters are highly engaged with mobile phones and electronic gadgets. And I just sort of worry, you know, about our future and who we perceive ourselves to be and, you know, how we, how we, how are we are seen to ourselves and to the outer world. And I think, you know, Scott is absolutely great. I mean, people from all over the world just love to be engaged. We, 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 we Scots speakers and, you know, we should be indeed as individuals and groups be very proud of that. You know, um, you know, I, and I just wanted to say that this is not a political thing by any means. This is pure, purely from people, individuals gathering together themselves in a group, our vice, connecting with other groups and other individuals to get excited about our own Scots language. Right. Now, just a, a point to Jack and um, the importance of groups like your, your voice in um, Dorek TV. Um, what is the importance of this, you know, gathering this momentum, Jack? What do you, what do you, what you, what are you saying on that? Well, I mean, I'd kind of repeat what I said earlier. If it's no us, then it's nobody. Um, we are the custodians of the language, and it's at a real. I mean, we all languages, all minority or indigenous languages today that are the dominant lead of their country. There, it's a real kind of turning point for a lot of them. Either speakers really, you know, grasp a thistle and uh, fight for the language, the new, or the next generation is not going to keep it on. I mean, there are fantastic educators and activists out there that are engaging young folk and bairns with the language, but it's, it's no widespread enough and it's no coordinated enough. And that's something we'd definitely be hoping to change with a, a Scots Language Act. We'd hope that that would create the kind of national strategies and bodies in place that could, could change that situation. But until we have something like that, it's, it's our own responsibility. Um, and certainly making all sorts of arguments is what we need to be doing at the moment because Scots has suffered for a lack of a lack of discussion, a lack of debate, a lack of knowledge around it. The arguments that Ur Vice is putting forward is the need for political action to protect it. And certainly what Dork TV is putting forward is the need to engage with the culture, engage with the speakers themselves in their own local dialects and local areas, um, engaging with the, the work and life around the language. Um, so I think groups like ourselves, two very different projects, each feed into the same outcome, which is, you know, making the argument for the language and then taking action. And if I could chip in for a second yeah. in terms of what you were saying, Jill, about the social media and the kind of future and the, the world we live in right now, I think it just gives us so much opportunity to connect. And that's a new thing. This is something that wasn't perhaps that much uh, visible in um, language activism and all these movements before, because folk couldn't really talk to each other very, very easily. You know, in the 90s, you would have to send out a, a fanzine of some sort around Scotland, right? whereas right now you just post a tweet and everybody reacts to it. And it's fantastic. So it's great. It's a great momentum to have. It's something that we should definitely embrace and build on. And uh, that's exactly why we're asking uh, the community to you know, participate in our survey, to be engaged, uh, and, and just to keep on doing the fantastic stuff that everybody's so excited about. Uh -huh. And I know I just um, just a wee bit of background on um, my enthusiasm for my own dialect, eh, folks, is because a lot of people know that I am from a um, farming background, you know, and I never really thought about it when I was growing up. You know, we just took it for granted that we were farmers and, you know, we were a bit out in the, we were, we were out in the sticks, you know. I know actually who we are was, was farming people, but we actually, we kind of played down our dialect. We did, because when I went to school and I spoke like Doric, you know, people would look at think, oh, mm. you know, they, well, she's country, she's fair fairum. And I thought, oh, and I honestly, that stuck with me all my life. Yeah. And until um, the, actually there's a big change happened to me. And it's when, when uh, my younger brother had to sell our, our family farm, you know, economic times, blah, blah, blah. There's just so many different uh, things coming in to, to, to you know, to uh, what's happening in Scotland today. Anyway, he had to sell our uh, family farm. Now, the day that I went to help my uh, brother flit, his move, my, move out of the farmhouse and the farm, was the saddest day of my life. Because I realised that then it wasn't just about a house. 
it wasn't just about a, a, a job for, for my brother or, you know, it had been work for my dad or for my forefathers. Actually, it had been a way of life yeah. and a culture. And we were closing the door on that because that was a period of our lives that would never, ever come back. And I was just heartbroken. I was heartbroken because that had been my forefathers' work. That had been our culture. That had been our background. That had been our identity. Yeah. And then I started to think, that's when I thought, you know, I really need to do something here <laughs> because, you know, because who we are is wrapped up in the way that we speak, you know, and behind that, obviously, is culture and identity. Yeah. And that's why I just so want to work now in, in trying to promote our language and our dialect, because, you know, like many other industries that are, have gone, you know, to, to, you know, have gone, you know, are no longer there. You yeah. know, they are part of our culture and industry, uh, our culture here in, in, in Scotland today. But so, therefore, we have to carry on because there are new cultures uh, growing up all the time in, in Scotland. And I mean, there is a new, um, you know, identification in Scotland today. But somehow we've got to get the threads of it all going together. And I think that's why I get excited about our vice, because that's what you're doing. Another really important thing for, for people to realize is that having more than one language is an asset. This is something that you should be proud of and embrace and use. Uh, you know, we, we've been trained to think about uh, this kind of monolithic standard as something we should aspire to and the only way of communicating and, and thinking about and thinking about ourselves. But if you have more, why not celebrate it? Why not use it? Why not, um, you know, explore it and uh, and really stress it as part of your own identity? And that's a norm around the world. And Scotland is by no means any different than any other place in the world, uh, you know, by way of having uh, multiple linguistic resources to fall back on. And I think it's just beautiful. It's something to be celebrated. And, and it's wonderful to see uh, primary kids and secondary kids, uh, secondary school pupils nowadays being able to actually reach uh, to these um, uh, traditions and engage with them properly. Uh, because your generation, Jill, as you were saying, you were not able to do that. So I think change is coming. And that's really good. And that's something that we at the university also have to be aware of, that there is a new generation of sc confident Scots speakers coming up. And we, we really need to think hard what to offer these kids when they start, uh, you know, coming to the university and uh, going to professions. Uh, it would be wonderful to be able to use Scots as a matter of fact, be, be you know, a legitimate language of, of workplace, of media, of culture, of education, you know, in any variety, in any version of Scots that exists out there. So that's something I would like to see for the future of Scots. And I think, yeah, that, that's lovely, Joanna, because I think, you know, my own background, you know, if somebody said to me 20 years ago that I was going to engage with somebody from, you know, from Glasgow University, I would have thought, oh, no, <laughs> Oh, the way I speak, she's not going to, you know, she's not going to engage with me because, you know, the way that I speak, yeah. you know, and I, that just, you know, that just shows how everything is just open out there nowadays to be who you are, speak how you want to speak and who you yeah. are culturally. And that, it, that is, that will open such a lot of confidence for, for, for yourself. Absolutely. You know, I know, Jack, come on, Jack, a few words from you, Jack. I, I think it's it's all about confidence. Um, yeah. We we need to be changing who we think about the Scots language, and we need to be pushing down barriers. Because if there's a situation where you feel, oh, maybe I shouldn't be speaking Scots in in this context, maybe folk will judge me. I mean, that's a form of you know discrimination against you against yeah. the way you speak. And like all discrimination, we shouldn't be gaining into that. We shouldn't be letting it it win. You should be saying, no, nah, this is the way I speak. I'm going to hud it and I'm going to do it no matter what folk think. And that's really yeah. hard at first. It's really hard to feel like you're being judged or that you're, you're going again the grain a bit. But the more folk do it, the more it becomes normalised, the more confident other folk become. And that's how you change things. You date yourself and you push forward yourself. And it's really important that, that we're the pioneers of this, this linguistic change. Uh, and, you know, uh, folks, believe it or not, when I engage with some of the older people um, in this area of Aberdeenshire, you know, a Donick speaking uh, area, you know, some of the older people will say to me, and that you won't believe this, that when they were at school, right, they used to get the strap. You know what yeah. the strap is for the Domini? <laughs> they used to get the belt from the Domini for speaking in their own language, for speaking in Doric. They couldn't do that at school. They could do it when they went home, but not in school. You just thought, oh, my gosh, that 
you, that just, you know, how we are felt intimidated about the way that we, we speak and how about, you know, I mean, I grew up with a very low self-esteem. I'll, I'll, I'll be truthful, you know, because if you were in a backwater or a fair, I mean, <laughs> we are knees deep in dubs <laughs> because we live next to the North Sea, you know, you know, and you went to, uh, you know, you went to a, a bigger school and they are spoke, you know, a different way than what I did. I, I honestly downed myself terribly and now I found a voice and, you know, we're speaking to or vice it's all about finding your voice in the world and being confident about who you are and how you want to speak because you know i feel dreadful because my parents are gone now my grandparents are gone long gone now they spoke spoke doric in sentences mm -hmm. and i spoke doric in sentences when i was a bairn you just never thought anything on anything else but now i have lost my ability to speak my own tongue yeah. in sentences I remember some of the words, but I cannot physically remember all of the words. Sometimes they will ping back at me. But, um, but I, that's why the importance of being able to, to speak to other people and engage like this, uh, because we have means to be able to engage now um, very easily than we did before. So therefore, let's get engaging, engaging in our dialects, engaging in the Scots language. And, you know, <laughs> good things are around the corner. Anyway, <laughs> folks. I think we will wind up there and I'll just a closing uh, from Joanna and then a closing from Jack and um, that will be us, I think. Joanna. I just want to say that I'm really excited to be part of this movement, you know, as an academic, uh, we very often seem to be perceived as people who are really detached and don't want to engage, but uh, nowadays things are changing in academia as well, so uh, we're out there, we want to talk to, to folk, we want to hear what you think, take part in the survey, the future of Scots is for, for you to decide, it's for all of us to decide, so let's just make this happen. Perfect, Joanna. Jack, if you're still there, Jack, are we still connecting? Well, quite made to say, Joanna's really hit the nail on the head there. It's, it's all about, you know, engaging with all different parts of the country. And uh, the more that we can engage with viewers of this channel, the better, because we want to hear what you think about the future of Scots. And uh, we shouldn't be looking backwards or focusing on, on the negatives. We should be thinking about the future and what we want our language to be the morn and the morn after that. And uh, this is the first step. So I'm, I'm sure Jill will put a wee link to the survey in the description or something, and uh, we'll be able to all fill that in and make our voices heard and, you know, look forward to an amazing future for the language. But we need to be the ins that make it happen. Well, folks, for this little... Um little corner of the world, this nook of the world today, from the most northeasterly point in Scotland, in Croon Bay here, connecting with Jack in Edinburgh and Yuan at Glasgow University. It's just a pleasure. It's a pleasure that we can do this. Okay, pleasure okay. to be here. Thank you for having us, Jill. Thanks.